Hello everyone. Welcome to Real Signaling Academy. So our goal here is to cover as many signaling topics as possible and then discuss about those. Today's topic is going to be headway. So let's get into it. Before we start talking about headway, I want you to think about the freeway analogy or the highway analogy. So what happens when you're driving on the highway? Well, when you drive, what you try to do is you try to maintain a safe distance from the car in front, right? And the safe distance depends on well, first your speed. Uh, the more your speed, you know, the more safe distance you try to maintain, then the adhesion, let's say if it's raining or if it's snowing, then you try to maintain more distance then uh, slope if it's downward slope you'll try to maintain more distance if it's upward slope you can go closer so all these factors basically change this safe distance and why that's happening why are you maintaining that safe distance is because if anything were to happen to this car if this car were to slow down or if this car were to apply brakes you need to have enough distance to be able to safely react and safely stop before this car. So that's the whole reason of having the safe distance. Another thing you'll notice is that as the speed starts to slow, the safe distance also is reduced. You know, you have, you're more confident. You can go closer to the car in front. So I want you to keep that thought in mind. And with that thought, we'll start discussing about the headway in railways. Now the same thing happens in railways also. Your train in front and then there's a train in back. You try to maintain a safe distance between the two. Obviously this safe distance is much more than the safe distance on the freeway or on the road because the wheel rail adhesion is very low and because of that wheel rail adhesion you have really long braking distances. So that's one reason why your safe distances are really, really long on the railway concept. And this safe distance is what primarily determines the headway. Now I've spoken a lot about headway. You know, what, what does it actually mean? What's its definition? Now there are two definitions of the headway. So every time we talk about headway, it will always be either headway distance, which is some somewhat uh, the safe distance that we were talking about before and there's headway time in railways usually headway time is the more used definition like whenever people talk about headway they're usually talking about uh, the headway time you know they'll mention it in seconds or minutes but let's read this so what's headway distance the headway distance is separation distance between two vehicles now that's very important you know, it has to be running at normal speed. So what's headway time? So headway time is the shortest time it takes for two following trains to cross same point on the guideway one after the other. Now there are two important things going on here. One is the shortest time. So I'll talk about shortest time later, but first let's look at the diagram here. So what's going on in this diagram? Uh, like I said, uh, two following trains to cross same point on the guideway, right? So now let's pick this arbitrary point. So that's the point. Now you have all these trains running normally at normal speed. So don't forget that. Now when your train one crosses this point, you timestamp it, and then you cal then you calculate this T1, whatever is the time at that point. Then you wait. Then you wait for the train two to cross that point. And that becomes your T2. So this T2 minus T1 is going to be the interval, the time interval between two trains, and that is going to be your headway. Now there are a few things that this headway will depend on. The first thing is uh, the type of signaling. This is most important. You know, the type of signaling that's there on the line, whether it's two aspect, three aspect, four aspect. It could be cab signaling, moving block, different flavors of signaling. They will all dictate the headway. The second thing is obviously braking distance. Why braking distance? Because don't try to think about this freeway concept again. 
that as the braking distance uh, lowers, you know, the more your train is able, the faster your train is able to brake and the harder your train is able to brake, the slower you can have these two trains running next to each other. So braking distance also has an impact. And the third thing is slope of line. You know, if you're going on downward gradient, you would like to be farther from the train in front. If you're going on upward gradient, you can, you can be closer. Now, this is not the full list. There's actually a lot more uh, factors which will determine the headway. But we will talk about those in the next few slides and also in the next few videos. So now let's get a little more technical. I spoke about headway and now we'll look at some graphs. So why, why this graph? So let me explain to you what this graph first means. So it's, it's a distance time graph. And one thing about headway is a lot of times when you will be talking about headway, this distance time graph, graph will most likely be discussed or this is some graph which you'll have to look at. I've drawn a simple example. It's very self-explanatory. X-axis is time, Y-axis is distance, and these lines show the train movement. Uh, I'm also, usually on the time distance graph, you'll not see the layout. Layout is separate, but I have drawn the layout here just for ease of understanding. Now you can see, uh, it's simple. It, the green line is first train, going from this platform to this platform. That's the distance time graph. It starts, stops at the second platform, stops at third platform, stops at fourth platform. Then the red train follows. It starts a little later than green train, performs the same maneuver, so you know, so on and so forth. Uh, I've drawn this little dotted green line also for the, this green train which does a turn back. So it will basically turn back and go back up. Now, why this graph is important is because this graph gives you a very good picture about headway. How? So look at this. Now, as I mentioned in the definition, headway is basically the time separation between two trains crossing the same point on guideway. So let's pick this, this dotted line, this point on the guideway, and like I like I showed you in this diagram above T1, T2, you know, same thing to calculate here. The first train crosses this point on guideway at T1, the second train crosses this guideway on T2, third train on T3. So this T2 minus T1 becomes headway. So just to give you an idea, you know, I did a Google search. I searched timetable train graph, and as you can see here, uh, what it brings up is basically all these complex graphs. So that's what I'm trying to explain, that in this industry, a uh, timetable train graph will almost always be represented like this, and it will also be helpful in trying to understand the, uh, the headway. So now we have spoken a lot about the whole concept, but then you must be wondering, why do I need to know about headway so much? You know, I thought, oh, the headway of this line is two minutes, two and a half minutes simple like why do i need to know so much about this so the first most important reason why you need to know headway is because you need to plan capacity now whenever we're building a new subway line or a new metro line or railway line inter-regional line any sort of line one thing that we need to determine is this number called passengers per hours per direction pphpd why this is important is because this is the baseline number. You know, before you start to build any line, you need to be sure, you need to be, you need to have an idea of how many passengers you want to transport from point A to point B. You know, if this number is very low, let's say this number was only 100, 200 passengers, then that's not enough. Then, you know, nobody would like to invest in a full railway line for just 100 passengers. But let's say this number is 30,000, 40,000, a bigger number, which usually happens in congested cities. Well, then it makes more sense, you know, then you might want to invest in a railway line. Uh, so this is the base number. 
how that number feeds into the headway calculation. Let's look at this example. So let's say this number is 40,000. You know, your urban planning in your city, it decides that, okay, here, we want to build a subway line and we want to transport 40,000 passengers per hour per direction. Then that help, that is where you start with your planning now. And how do you how do you plan? Well, so let's look at these two options. Now you have two options. This is just an example for illustrative purposes. Obviously, you can have more options. There are all sorts of configurations that you can go for, but but let's look at the simple options. Option one is shorter train. Option two is longer train. Shorter train, well, let's say it can only have one thousand passengers. Longer train can have two thousand passengers, right? Uh, now, what does that mean? What that means is that if you want to satisfy this 40,000 passengers per hour per direction, then you will have to send 40 short trains every hour. That's how you'll get 40,000 passengers, right? But if it's a longer train, then you can only have 20 trains per hour. And those 20 trains, will satisfy the 40,000 demand. And if you want to send 20 trains per hour, if you what that means is that you need to send one train every 180 seconds. So that becomes your headway. See see like how this number translated into headway. Same way if it's a shorter train, then you'll need to have 90 seconds as the headway. Now just an industry fact uh, 90 seconds is usually very short and very hard to achieve. Uh, theoretically, 90 seconds is okay, but uh, operationally, 90 seconds is very hard to achieve. Your trains need to be moving very close to each other, and there is literally no room left for disruption. Now, what's the next benefit of knowing headway? You need to plan timetable. So, if you look at the train graph, uh, these are the three trains, except now they have different slopes. What does that mean? That means these one train is faster than the other. So all these three trains seem to have different speeds. And how you plan timetable is that you need to make sure, you need to make sure that this red uh, train is crossing the green train at the passing loop. If I were to move this red line a little bit uh, further or a little bit before, then you'll have conflicts appearing outside of the platform. Same way for this blue line train, you need to space it out enough so that it arrives at the final platform after the green train. Uh, let's look at the next one. So this one is actually very, big. I would say, uh, overlooked aspect. So I'll show you the examples here. You would have seen terminal platforms, right? Uh, which is actually the last platform on the line. But then what the what people don't realize is that this track configuration around the terminal platform can have a huge impact on headway. These four track arrangements itself which look like which look like they're very minor changes you know you have a double crossover here on this side of the platform but now you have a double crossover on this side it's single here single here all these four have a very different headways same way you look at the capacity let's say your capacity studies give you an answer that uh, that the capacity that you need on these four stations is much higher than the capacity you need on the outer stations that needs to be taken into consideration for the track layout why because if i did not have these crossovers then you cannot have a short loop right you can only have like one loop but then uh, once you know the headway you need to achieve in this part in this part on different parts of the line you can create an optimized track layout to meet the passenger demands. Same way, uh, passing loop, you know, like we look at in, looked at the uh, timetable graph before, I'll go back there. 
time this is the timetable graph you you would have seen there is this little passing loop here why this passing loop is important is because if this green train is dwelling or stopping the other term if it's dwelling at the platform you need to give way to the red train the red train needs to be able to pass the green train and how that will be possible it's by providing passing loops that's just few examples there's a lot of other configurations there's a lot of other ways where the layout affects the headway so let's look at the last one uh, the last one is planning fleet size this one is uh, very easy to understand but it has big implications now how do you plan fleet size well for a simple configuration like this and for a simple round trip uh, maneuver you calculate the round trip travel time and then you divide that by headway uh, that gives you the number of trains you need this one's very basic obviously when you actually buy trains you might want to buy a few extra trains for spare purposes if and if any of your train fails if, or if anything happens you know for those cases but yeah this is how you determine fleet size this is a very basic example if you have short loop and if you have long loops your calculations will be, will be different if the lay, if the layout is not that that straight if there's any like branches or things like that then again your round trip travel times will be different then the, the calculation basically starts getting more complicated what i'm trying to explain is that uh, you need to know this headway number in order to plan the fleet size so thank you so much this uh it was i really enjoyed explaining this concept let me know in the comment section below how how what you felt about the videos if you want me to include anything